What is it like being a Jamaican living in Charlotte, North Carolina? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the world, I talk to Gaynor Russell, a Jamaican living in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Gaynor. How are you? Hi, Xavier. I'm good. And you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Right. So first question. Which part of Jamaica are you from? I'm from Kingston, where everybody else is from. <laughs> <laughs> so which school are you representing? The Great Convent of Mercy Academy, Alpha Academy. All right, an Alpha girl. Best school. <laughs> <laughs> is there a teacher at Alpha that impacted you that you'd like to give a shout out to? Um, my English teacher um, really impacted my my life at Alpha, but my, my friend and science teacher, Miss Jackson, is probably the most outstanding one. Okay. She was a younger teacher, someone I could connect with, and um, she was just fun to be around. And I loved chemistry, so. Oh, okay. And what was the English teacher's name? The English teacher's name, um, I cannot remember my English teacher name right now, <laughs> but um, very impactful because English also was my subject, English and history. And okay. so um, those were very important. Um, and the thing is, I can't remember her name, but I just saw her in New York last year. So Oh, wow. Miss oh, Daly. Wow. Miss Daly, I remember. Really? Okay. Miss Daly. So do you use the chemistry? Um, not really. I'm into finance. So I, I'm in the banking industry. So chemistry is not really top of mind for me. So the chemistry came in and basically it, you know, it's one of them things you study and yeah, it, it, it mo you moved on. <laughs> yeah. You know how it is in Jamaica. You're on track to, to do sciences and arts. Right. Or you're on track to do other things. So I was a science art student. And so I had to do some of those subjects that I no longer use. <laughs> yeah. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. So tell us about your um, story in terms of coming to America, one. Um, and then also, was it a, a culture shock when you got to America? Yeah. i um, love to tell you about that. Um, well, I came to um, the U.S. after high school, after my A-levels. And so I did some non-traditional things. I got married um, while I was doing my A-levels, which was unheard of at Alpha Academy, right? I got special permission to get married. But Whoa! <laughs> how, young, how young are we talking about? I told my girlfriends when we were sitting around chatting about what we were going to do after school. And, you know, everybody was planning to go to UA or planning to go to college abroad. And I said, look, I need to make sure I can get a husband, have a baby and then go to college, which was exactly what I did. So um, I migrated to New York um, after I got married okay. while pregnant. <laughs> and, <laughs> and so um talk about culture shock it was beyond culture shock it was um i came at a pretty mild time by new york records um because i came up in march um 1980 something mm. i want to give away my age um, <laughs> <laughs> very young let's leave it at very young <laughs> <laughs> very young and um, when I was, um, when I came up, they had, um, an unseasonably cold winter and mm. I, that was shocking for me. I had never left home before that. I was very, um, um, I grew up in a very protected household. So I'd never left home, not even to spend the night out. And so it was a year of turmoil for my husband. I was crying every night. I was, oh, no. yeah, I, I was in bad shape. Oh, and no. then after a year in New York, we relocated to Charlotte, North Carolina. Wow. Charlotte, North Carolina is beautiful now. Back then it was all bush. <laughs> so you've seen the growth. 
I've so, seen the growth. So I know you don't want to give away the age, right? Uh, well, uh, let me not ask. I was going to ask because it's 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 quite a, a story there. And I was going to ask how long you have been married, but people are going to calculate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, For those who think that marriage can't last, when you get married too young, it can. Nice, nice. You all grow, grow into it and grow up together. Yeah. <laughs> you, he, you either learn to keep him or start over. So I, I decide to keep him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, how many kids, if you don't mind me asking? I have three wonderful kids. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. three three. Wonderful, wonderful kids. Awesome. So, Caroline, I mean, Charlotte, you know, you say it was was Bush. Yeah. Um, and so you have lived there practically, you know, let's say thir more than 30 odd years. Yes. Um, tell us about the food there. Tell us about the people itself. And I'll ask the other one after you give me a little bit of that. <laughs> okay. Um, well, Charlotte is a predominantly white city, right? Um, and when we came here, um, we had to get adjusted to that because, you know, in New York, you had your cliques of Jamaicans or cliques of Caribbean people and Italians and, you know, different types of people. In Charlotte, it's black and white, right? And talk about Caribbean people that we probably brought the influx of Caribbean people to Charlotte. And so um, those of us who moved down with the company um, created a Caribbean community. And back then, um, Trinidadians were primarily the, you know, they were the bigger group. Um, but as you know, um, Jamaicans have to show their face. So we started a Jamaican group as well. And we still interact very closely together, though, so that's good. Okay. But we we um, we started a Jamaican group, and so over the years, um, for thirty something years, we have had a group of Jamaicans um, meeting up. We have parties, home parties, different things to keep the culture going. Um, and you're the and you are the the. I mean, I think there's an official association and you are the, the either past president or current president. I'm president for life. So we have a spin-off group of the one that we started earlier called the Jamaican American Cultural Association. I started that 20 and we started that group, you know, because we didn't just want to be a party group and eat food. We wanted to really do something to give back give back to Jamaica, give back to Charlotte. So every year we give a number of scholarships to students, rising college freshmen in Charlotte. Um, so we do that every year. But in addition, we would select two schools in Jamaica that we want to give back to. Um, nice. Our goal is to help at least two schools in every parish. And we have helped a number of, of parishes so far. Um, with nice. technology, equipment, scholarships. And so I've been doing the rounds in, in Jamaica to kind of, you know, give back technology equipment because when I was going to school, I didn't have a computer at home. Back then we, we used the encyclopedia. And for those of us who could <laughs> afford it, right? And um, I remember seeing a story um, with a kid in Old Harbor who was walking to school early morning and walking back from school. And, you know, I decided that, hey, I need to give that school some computers. We had started before that, but that really kind of um, cemented why I was doing it. And it gives up um, kids the opportunity to be able to do their homework before school and after school. So um, I think if we do that and we can spread the lessons around, kids can do better in school. So I'm committed to making sure that that happens. So uh, uh, before I move on, what's the website or is there a Facebook page or is there Instagram? How can they, anybody, you know, Caribbean, Jamaican in the Charlotte, North Carolina area um, be a part of this organization? So our website is www.jcahelp.org. 
um, jacahelp.org, or you can hit us up on Facebook at um, Jamaican American Cultural Association. Okay, awesome, awesome. So is there, uh, well, well you, you all just had an event um, the, the other day, um, you know, so you, is this an annual, well, tell us about the event and is it an annual event for Jamaicans in North Carolina? Um, and is it just, you know, do you have people coming from Raleigh and all the other areas to come to the, this kind of celebration or event? So it's, it's really a local event. We have about 200 people in attendance every year. It's one of our featured fundraiser. We have like a nice Christmas party and we have the gala. So the gala is what we just had on July 8th. And we usually have about 200 to 250 people in attendance and people get to dress up and we have um, Caribbean food, Caribbean music, and then we award our scholarships there. I want to give a big up to Caribbean Hut is a local Caribbean restaurant in Charlotte and they provide our food. We have been partnering for maybe mm, 18 or, or 15 of the 24 years. And I've been getting free food for my function. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> Couldn't do it without um, the owner of Caribbean Hut, Trevor Lewis. And um, we put on, I think it's a really nice event. Uh, you know, you know, after you've been given back and participating for a number of years, you get tired sometimes. So some years I'm like, you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm tired. <laughs> and, you know, Jamaican people call me up and say, you can't do that, man. You have to do it. You, you have, have to do it. Listen, I know the president for life thing. I've yeah. been involved <laughs> in some organizations and, and trust me, at one point I... Uh, some stories I tried to resign <laughs> and they called me back and said, no, we're not taking your resignation. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you, you so, understand exactly totally, what I'm going through. Totally understand what you're yeah. going through. Totally. Um, in terms of food, you know, you talk about this Caribbean Jamaican type restaurant. Where do you get your supplies? Where do you get your stuff? Are you getting your, all your Jamaican stuff there in Raleigh? Is there a Jamaican store? Is there a, you know, is there a patty shop that you go to? I mean, you know, where you get your fix of your food and, and to cook the food too, you know, in terms of yeah. ingredients to cook. So believe it or not, for years, when we first came down here, we would trek to New York like four times a year to get our supplies, like our beef patties or this, um, all the meats, all the fish, all the everything. But Charlotte has grown. And so we had a Caribbean um, store um, for, for a long time in Charlotte, several Caribbean stores. And, but the, the main one that we, we um, buy from just went out of business. So I'm pretty mm -hmm. sad about that, mm -hmm. um, Island Grocery. Mm -hmm. So now we have to buy from the big supermarket like Compare. I don't know if you've heard of Compare Supermarket. But um, it's a Hispanic store and they carry a number. You know, you get your goat meat, your oxtail, okay. fish. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then all the Caribbean seasoning. So we eat Caribbean food every day. And okay. believe it or not, when we have an event, you would never think Jamaican people eat Caribbean food at their home. Because if you don't have Caribbean food, they're upset. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So we do get our fix. So. Apart from, you know, you said there's a, a, a Trini, Trinidadian community there. Is there any big events that happen throughout the year where the Caribbean community um, celebrates uh, together? We used to have a festival. Like the, the Jamaican group used to put on a nice festival. And we did that for about five, six years. But it takes a lot of work, a lot of commitment, and a, like, a lot of working together. Jamaican festival is not like a Trinidadian festival. So, you know, the disagreements come and, and so we haven't been doing that. But one thing we do though, is we support each other's event. Okay, I see. I yeah. See. So what's the funniest or, or um, strangest question you've been asked when, you know, probably in your early days there, when you tell people I'm Jamaican? You know, maybe the funniest one came from, from a job situation. 
they're like um so you know you're you're a a a a, a a black woman, uh, uh, you're a woman from Jamaica, but you don't consider yourself black, do you? And so my, my rebuttal was, what do you see when you see me? Do you see Jamaican or do you see black? And so totally identify with being black. That's the first order of things. And then secondly, being a Jamaican. Wow. That was a, a straight, that was far right question. Wow. Um, yeah. And I mean, the ball came from the far right or it could have come from the far left. Exactly. <laughs> straight, exactly. Straight question. Very strange yep. question indeed. Yep. So in terms of adjustment, when you moved from Jamaica, New York, and then you came to, to um, Charlotte, North Carolina, what was the biggest adjustment you had to make? Um, one was being away from family, I think. I didn't realize how traumatic that was. Like when you migrate from Jamaica and live in the US, you kind of give up your life as you know it, right? And um, you kind of separate from everything that you hold dear and kind of start over a life. I, I remember traveling from Jamaica one year and I saw this lady sitting down with her pocket, her, her pocketbook in her hand and she was looking through the window watching the airplane. And I struck up a conversation with her and she just shake her head with this look on her face. And she said, every time I board this plane, I feel like I leave my soul behind. Mm. And I thought about that. Mm. And for years, that's what it felt like to me. I mm. left my soul in Jamaica. Mm. So, it, you know, as the years go by, you have your own family and you you start interacting and you're doing school and life gets in the way and you, you just learn to build a new life. And unfortunately, you separate from some things that you used to be that used to be really important to you. Mm -hmm. But then you gain new things that are also very important to you. So nice. Nice. I, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. So cost of living, what is it like in, in Charlotte? So Charlotte, when we came down years and years ago, was a reasonable town. Um, rent was dirt cheap. We were able to buy brand new cars um, as a young couple, two bedroom apartment, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. So that was um, Charlotte back in, in the days. Okay. Um, Fast forward to now, Charlotte real estate is like off the chart because mm -hmm. New Yorkers are moving down in Charlotte in droves. Mm -hmm. So a house that you used to get for like maybe 350,000 is now 600 and odd thousand. It's, it's really um, getting expensive now. Wow. Yeah. So if there is uh, maybe a place or maybe an, an event or something that you say, Xavier, if you're coming to Charlotte, come at this time because the sunset here is beautiful or the leaves change here or this event happens annually in, in, in Charlotte and you must come, at, come and see this. What would that one thing be? Could be even an attraction. You know, this is an attraction that you must see if you come to Charlotte. Just come in at the summertime. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Just come to Charlotte in the summertime. There, Charlotte is not known for a big event kind of thing. It's, it's a pretty low-key city. If you want the excitement, you go to Atlanta down the street. It's three and a half hours away. Um, okay. Come when the, the Jacob Gala is happening in, in June. Okay. Um, okay. The, the, the <laughs> summer is nice in Charlotte. Um, nice, good people, nice, good living. Nice meaning. What, what's the temperature like? Because he, listen, this heat wave, uh, across, you know, North America and the Caribbean is, you know, there, there is summers are no longer the summers they used to be for, for some places that were cooler. <laughs> Yeah, Charlotte can be humid too, and it gets very hot. And, you know, people complain about the July and August weather. I love it because, I, you know, I'm used to the heat. 
And then unlike Jamaica, where you can get away from the heat, I'm constantly in an air conditioned house, car, whatever. So you kind of, kind of don't feel it as much. Uh, right. Whereas Jamaica, you have to walk outside and you have to, you know, really deal with the weather here. You kind of hide in the air condition. So, you know, I don't mind it. I prefer summer every day over winter. <laughs> yeah. Right. So what advice would you give anyone that is thinking of moving to the Charlotte um, or, even, you know, Charlotte area or even the North Carolina, the state of North Carolina? Yeah, you have to have a mindset of being in a place where you want to raise your kids in a, 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 a good place. You want to live in a home that is, you know, a nice home and have a, like a really clean life. Right. Um, but Charlotte is on the quiet side. You know, it's it's like living in the, the, the suburbs in Jamaica. It's not it's not for the the the, the hype Jamaicans. You know, you're not <laughs> going to find the reggae clubs here and there. If you want a good lounge or something, you probably could find one um, couple spots to eat. Um, but it's really a family town. It's about raising family. So if you're not of that family type, you might not enjoy Charlotte as much. And bring your husband or your wife with you because it's hard to link up to. People <laughs> get married early from there in college or something like that, you know? So they, you know, it's hard. I, I have heard, I don't know, but I've heard that it's hard for single people to kind of find a mate sometime. So it's, it's come settle on with the family, kind of live the quiet life, to, you know, that to, to an extent. Yeah, and if you want to drive a nice car and live in a nice, flashy house, this is the place to do it. You can't do it in New York and you can't do it in other places, but you can do it in Charlotte, you know. Right. And um, salaries here are pretty good compared to other places, you know, so not bad. <laughs> nice. So I went go back to something I was asking. So I, I, patty shops. How many patty shops are there now? Or, or is it one the one restaurant or you have a couple? We have, a, we have a few restaurants. We have Island Groceries. I just he heard another one announced in Monroe the other day. It's on the outskirts of Charlotte. We have Mama's Caribbean Grill. We have a couple. And I oh, think each sure. of them offer their different version of patty. But right. when I travel, I bring my patty with me too. Okay. So, so there's no official patty shop no. yet? Okay. No. Because, you know, you know... The Jamaicans have arrived once you can say, you know, I went, you know, this party better than this party, or I'm going to this party one or whatever. So you're getting there. But right. we're not there yet. No, yeah, we're getting there. We're not there yet. We're <laughs> not there yet. We, we, right. we bring our own party. So I buy my tasty party in Montego Bay, bring it with me. And when I go to New York, I buy patty, patties in New York and same thing in Florida. So I'm always traveling with food. <laughs> yeah so that leads me into the next thing i was gonna talk about is here's a scenario you and, and the scenario is real and new because you just had this scenario you land in jamaica you get off the plane what is that first thing that you're doing whether it be some people is coconut water some people is a patty some people is i have a dip in the water or kiss the ground or you know i visit this person or whatever what's that ritual what's that first thing you're doing once you exit the airport food all the way i need some curry goat i need some um patty and I, I i'm a food collector once i get off the plane i have to hit all the different food spots so um <laughs> And then I get too much food, so I can't eat everything. But I definitely have my Kentucky Fried Chicken. I have a spot in New Kingston that I get some curry goat. I am, you know, I'm not a big fish person, but I'll still go to Helsh and eat some fish and lobster too. Right. But food all the way. All right. All the way. All right. <laughs> yeah. So how do you typically say, and listen, thank you. Again, I thank you for taking the time telling us your story about, you know, uh, moving to Charlotte, North Carolina. Folks, she gave the website. You know, this is someone that's been in the community for a while. So if you are thinking of moving to the area or visiting the area, 
you know, she's president for life of the Jamaican Association there. So for life. So how do you typically say goodbye? <laughs> Well, thanks, Xavier, for having me. I enjoyed the conversation. My website, again, is www.jakahelp.org. So if you're in Charlotte and you hear this interview, come out and support our event. We're giving back to Jamaicans um, in Jamaica, and we're also giving back to Jamaican students in Charlotte as well as other students. The way I usually say goodbye is see you later. All right. Well, yeah. I, will, I will do the Miss Lou. Walk good. Walk good. <laughs> All Take right. care. Take care again. Um, One love. One love. <laughs> Show some love now. Hit that like button. Subscribe to our channel. And hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.